Good evening, Planet Earth again! Uh, welcome back. Or, if you didn't watch the first video, then welcome. But you should watch the first video. Um, so the first video uh, talked about um, just updating you on everything that had happened since uh, I last saw you guys. Um, and this video more is going to talk about the big takeaways, the big picture things from the past four years. So... Uh, again, uh, there's a link in the description below that I very much encourage you to click on. Uh, this will take you to uh, an article I wrote, the last article I wrote for the tech, which is an opinion article um, about, a, it's, it's essentially a review of MIT um, based on my experience there. Um, and that will go into a lot of the specifics about what I'm talking about here. And um, I think it's a good read overall. Uh, a lot of MIT students have told me that it's certainly agrees with their experience as well. So, big takeaways. So first of all, MIT is awesome. I would not trade the experience of going to MIT for anything. I am so glad that I applied there, that I got in, that I somehow survived the four years there, um, because, and I've always said this, one of the, the, the number one reason one of the number one reasons to go to MIT, there are multiples, um, is because of the people there. Um, I, I, I will likely never be again be in an environment that has so many people, essentially everyone, that are all super passionate, super motivated, super driven to, to make a difference, to change how the world works, and all different aspects of the world, whether it's uh, government or technology or, uh, you know, you know engineering, how we do anything. I mean, I, you have watched these videos presumably for a while, so you're familiar with some of the conversations we ha we've had. Um, it's been incredible. Um, I've made some really great friends um, that I hope to continue to stay in touch with. Uh, I look very much look forward to seeing what all of my friends end up doing with their life, um, since they're, they're, uh, there's just so many promising individuals there. Uh, and... That, yeah, so that that's definitely a, a big thing. Um, two, if you can apply to MIT, if you have even a vague interest in going, you should apply. Um, so many people, so many people, even even after watching these videos or watching the um, how to get into my MIT video or whatever, so many people don't apply because they assume they'll have no chance of getting in. When I applied, I didn't think I would get in. Very few, maybe this isn't true, I don't know, I think most people applied at MIT not expecting to get in. Um, the acceptance rate was something like 8% last year. It gets very, very low. Um, <laughs> that probably sounds rather discouraging. <laughs> but you should apply um, because it just the opportunities that you'll have there to meet people and interact with people and to learn at the, one of the best schools in the world is so valuable and has so enriched uh, my life and it's something that I will carry with me forever um, and I can't say enough uh, as to how wonderful the school is and how much I've enjoyed my time there and how much it's helped me uh, as a person so if you can apply apply uh, you are probably thinking right now well yeah but like I won't get in that's what most people think, as I've said. So if you can apply, you should apply. If you have an interest in doing the things that MIT offers, if you want to do something that it doesn't offer, probably not the best school for you. Um, but if you're interested in any of the fields they offer, do it. Enough said on that. Um, what else? So I, I have a roll each spinning chair. Uh, woo. Uh, this is beats the wooden chair that I sat in for four years at MIT. Um, so I'm excited to have to have this. I got it at a, a store, and it was cool. Um, so it's nice. Uh, that was not really the third takeaway from my time at MIT. I just thought I'd mention it because it's fun. Um, third takeaway from MIT. Uh, a lot of you will recall, I alluded to this in the, I think, in the last video, that my junior year, I was really struggling with, did, did, struggling with the decision uh, as to what I should major in. Should I major in political science, which I was currently majoring in, um, but was going to hate the last four required classes, which were all about how to conduct studies, how to do research in the political sciences, how to, you know, things like that. 
uh, or should I switch to physics, which I really loved and felt I, I really enjoyed, and one of the things that I went to MIT to do. Um, but historically, I had struggled a lot with, um, and uh, if you recall, I ended up deciding to do physics, as my diploma says, uh, because I had decided that fear of failure is not a sufficient justification not to do something that you want to do. So I wanted to do physics. I really enjoyed it. I felt strongly about it. I was passionate about it. Um, and yeah, I was afraid that I was going to fail, and in doing so, I would somehow not be able to... I don't know what I would do, because if I failed that, there's no way I was going to graduate on time with any major, and what major would I switch to? I really was sure. So there's a lot of uncertainty there. But I'm so glad that I switched to physics. So glad I switched to physics, um, because I really enjoyed it. I didn't fail. I succeeded, because I I was passionate about it. I really loved it. I cared about it. Um, and... Uh, Certainly, there were small failures along the way, uh, and even you know before the, that decision, and all kinds of things. There were small failures along the way, um, but that was another thing that MIT was great for. Uh, was prior to MIT, I'd never really f like had big failures that made me question things. Uh, and at MIT, uh, there were times where. I, I, you know, didn't do well in a class, or I did, really did horribly on an exam, um, and that's been so valuable to me. Everyone says that, like, you know, uh, failure is is a valuable thing, but their behavior says the opposite, right? Like, everyone tries really hard to avoid it, it's the worst thing possible, oh no, but it's definitely helped me to really push my limits and push my boundaries. Um, and uh, it's, it's been incredibly valuable as an experience. Um, so that's another really big takeaway is if you fail at something, definitely embrace it, see what you can learn from it, and, and move forward. Um, oh, let me see, is there anything else? So I think those were the really big things, um, the big takeaways from MIT. Uh, the people are awesome. You should go there if you, if you should apply there if you can. Um, fear, of fear of failure is not a sufficient justification not to do anything. Failure in itself is, in fact, very valuable. Um, and I think that's all. In general, MIT has been awesome. Uh, I've loved every moment I've been there. Um, I've, you know, been on the T a few times and I've gotten off at the MIT stop. And I've been sad because my ID no longer works and no long longer lets me into the buildings. Um, I've, you know... Uh, I've walked through the, the halls a few times and felt very nostalgic. I've been in the student center and felt very nostalgic and sad that I'm not coming back in the fall. Um, even though I am very excited, certainly, to, to move forward and, and uh, start start my life after school. Um, I will be going back to school at some point to get a master's in either, either physics or education policy, or something along that line, um, because I, I have to, to renew my teaching license. Um, so... Uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Um, but overall, I'm just I'm really looking forward to the future years because uh, this is the first time where the next step is not clearly delineated. Uh, prior to graduating high school, you know what you have to do. Every year you go to school, you try you should be you know putting forth your best effort and doing well in classes. You do that for 12 years, and then you are supposed to go to college. So you go to college for four years, um, and then things become less clear, because what college do you go to? That's all up in the air. Um, what do you want to major in? That's all up in the air. What do you want to do as a career? That's all up in the air. What are your really big life goals? That's all up in the air. Uh, and when you finish undergrad, what then? A lot of people go to grad school. A lot of people go into the job market. Um, but from there, the possibilities really are just are unlimited. Um, so for the first time, I, I really, my only guide to my future is myself, um, as opposed to kind of society saying, okay, do this next. Um, so I think it's going to be a, a really great adventure, and I think MIT has prepared me very well for it. Um, and I want to say thank you to everyone who's watched these videos. Um, I know they 
are often probably quite boring, um, but I, I hope that in some way they've inspired you or they've helped you to see what it's like going to MIT. Because that really, I mean, that's the, why I did these videos. I wanted people to see what it's like inside uh, one of the most famous schools in the world and to see that the people there are human and awesome. Uh, as someone in high school who is uh, who wants to go, uh, apply to MIT or was thinking of going there um, came and visited and, and stayed with me for a day. And when he left, he was like, I was really surprised at the fact that everyone there was so normal, um, but not normal. Uh, and he mean, what he means by that is that we're normal people. We have normal interests. We do normal things. Um, but everyone is so enthusiastic and passionate. And yeah, when someone... You know, another thing that sets MIT students apart, I think, is if you give them a big problem, a lot of people might say, oh, well, I mean, I don't know, you can't do that, like, moving on. MIT students will really try to fix it, or really try to think about it. Even if they know they can't come to a solution, they'll talk about it, because there's value in discussing a problem. There's value in thinking about possible solutions to it. Um, and it's something that I think that our world could benefit a lot from. Um, so, thank you to all the viewers. Um, uh, final notes also, uh, there's been a lot of demand for another Google Hangout, um, so there will be a Google Hangout a week from today. Next Friday at noon will be a Google Hangout. Um, I'll post an announcement video talking about that and what you have to do and making sure that you can get in on it. Um, and this one will be uh, posted to YouTube afterwards. It was not done for the last one. This one, after it is done, the whole Hangout will be uploaded and you'll be able to watch it. Um, and I encourage all of you to subscribe. The link is also in my uh, video description. Subscribe to my other channel, Normandin Edu, uh, since this is probably about all I'm going to do with this channel. Um, we'll see in the coming years if something else happens. I'll use this for something else. But um, this is kind of the life at my T channel. Uh, so subscribe to my other one, Normandin Edu. I'm going to be developing educational content um, and videos on physics and math and things like that. Uh, in the coming years, and I'll be spending a lot more time and energy on that. Um, so if you want to keep seeing content that I develop, please do that. It'll be obviously very different than this channel, where I'm kind of sitting around and talking. Um, I guess in the other videos, I will be standing up and talking about physics or content. Um, uh, uh, but that is, that is all. So, yeah. It's been fun, guys. Thank you for all of your comments and your messages. Um, I've enjoyed them. Uh, I hope uh, I hope that uh, you know. Hope that in the future you'll you'll hear from me again in some way, some shape or form, something that happens. But I have a few other ideas for YouTube projects um, that I might do. But right now, I'm mainly thinking about the norm in edu. Um, so again, thanks for your viewership. Uh, Best of luck in all of your endeavors, uh, and for the final time, peace.